Okay, final step, let's design this dashboard. First things first, let's create a new dashboard, make it a little bit bigger, and drag our bubble chart on out. Now with all our previous dashboards, we've only used tiled objects. In other words, any item we've arranged gives us that gray shading when we move it around, and it will take up more or less space depending on how we adjust its neighboring objects. In this dashboard though, we're going to use a combination of tiled and floating objects. Let's go ahead and float our filter here to see how this works. Click on the filter to get that gray outline and then click that tiny drop down carrot in the upper right hand corner. Then select floating, great. So two things happened here. First, our filter now can be put anywhere on our dashboard regardless of where anything else is sitting. And second, our bubble chart, which is still a tiled object, did what we'd expect any tiled object to do and expanded to take up all that room it can. Since it's the only tiled object on the dashboard right now, it takes up the entire dashboard. Now, if we change the size of the dashboard, the tiled object will adjust, but the floating object won't. If we toggle to the layout pane and click on our filter object, we can see that it's literally sitting on specific X and Y coordinates on the dashboard. So because of this, when I use any floating object, I like to set the exact size of the dashboard to something fixed so that I know my design will stay put even if other folks have bigger or smaller screens. So this tiled and floating objects combination will allow us to use the extra space on either side of the bubble chart without needing to shrink the visualization to accommodate a bunch of text boxes. First, we'll click on the bubble chart and switch the view from standard to entire view. Then we'll go ahead and hide the title. And the bubble chart will now expand to use the full height of the dashboard. Uh, last thing, let's show the caption we created in step four and we'll write justify it. Now, when we move our filter around, the bubble chart isn't affected at all. Although our caption pushed the bubble chart up just a bit, so let's drag a tiled blank object above it to balance out the dashboard's spacing, and that'll push the bubble chart back down a smidge. Great. Now for our supporting text. This dashboard is a great example of visualization that grows out of some curiosity, like how many names of these 32,600 do we actually use? But sometimes when we've been in the building rabbit hole, a visualization's purpose might seem obvious to us, but totally cryptic to someone looking at it for the first time. Here's my recommendation. The more unusual the visualization, the more intensely we should leverage good old conversation. What would you tell someone to help them understand this viz if you were sitting down with them? Let's include the curiosity behind the dashboard as well as a few stats to help everyone see where they can go with this dashboard. Okay, we'll start with the question that sparked the dashboard. We'll add a floating text box by toggling the object boxes down here from tiled to floating, and then we'll drag out a text box. We'll add a title for the dashboard and just say, how many names do we actually use? Let's make that font bigger, bold, and then take the time to do some tweaking here to get this title positioned just so. We're trying to get the font to complement the shape of the bubble chart, but we also don't want to cover up the visualization itself too much because our floating text box sits on top of the bubble chart, and this will prevent our end user from being able to access the tooltips underneath. Okay, great. Now let's add a smaller text box just beneath the question to give some context. We'll drag another text box out onto the dashboard, and here we'll explain what the data set is and what about the data piqued our curiosity about this specific question. Click OK and position this text directly under the title. We'll use that left alignment of the title to line up our description. Okay, good. So one way to help an end user gain a foothold into your visualization is to highlight some interesting points along the way. Once they've got a framework in mind, then they can start to explore the visualization more independently. For me at least, this visualization's got several striking quick stats. So we'll add another text box and include a few notes. 10% of the cards use six names, 25% of the cards use 34 names, and 50% of the cards use 148 names. We'll keep following the shape of the visualization by right aligning these. We'll emphasize the stats by making them bold and purple, and then let's line this up. See how we're balancing out the upper left-hand corner content with the items in the bottom right? 
Now we'll go ahead and make our filters title more helpful. We'll leave our end user some instructions to change the percent of all social security cards here and go ahead and make that bold and the same color as our bubbles. Okay, cool. So now our end user notes the research question has some context about the data set, has several examples of stats that visualization can produce, and knows how to go about exploring this thing on their own. The very last thing we'll do, you know what it is, let's clean up our tooltips. We'll come back to the worksheet and use the same strategy we've been using with the rest of the text. Let's turn these data points into full sentences. We'll say, this name appears on this many social security cards issued from 1900 to 1999. It ranks here out of all the names arranged from most to least common. And this percentage of all the 20th century social security cards were issued with this or a more common name. Also, let's add a tiny footnote here to explain that a name had to appear at least 10 times in a single year to make it into our data set to begin with. And last but not least, let's add our name and rank again above as a sort of tooltip title. We'll turn it bold and the same color as our visualization. Beautiful. And there you go. Dashboard 5 is a wrap. I have fun playing with this dashboard. It's an entertaining one. This will finish up our exploration of the name data from 20th century social security cards. And if you've built all five dashboards so far, congratulations. You are well on your way to becoming a data phys expert. All right, I'll be back soon with a brand new data set. And until then, have a fabulous week.